The global wine industry is forecast to reach 385 billion U.S. dollars in 2021, with China driving consumption as the fastest growing market since Hong Kong became a wine hub in 2008 when tax was removed. As China's thirst for imported wine grows, so does the risk of drinking counterfeit wine. So I'll show you a couple of uh, something. Cristal from Le Rodre. Yes. You know, this is uh, one of the top champagne mm -hmm. in the world. So, you know, we are pretty privileged to have the exclusivity for Hong Kong. Wow. Um, I wish. Hong Kong imported $12 billion of wine in 2016, up 11% from the year before. Almost half of this was re-exported regionally, with 91% of it going to Macau and China. Pierre's company has four offices in China, but they don't do too much business there. The problem in China is we never know where the wine ends up. There's a lot of people who buy bulk wines in large quantities, and, but you don't see them in the market. Mm. So where the wine ends up. According to the Bordeaux Wine Council, 30,000 bottles of fake wine are drunk or sold every hour in China. Imported wine consumption in China went up 37% in 2015 from the year before to 43.7 million cases. Of course, the concern is how many of those bottles bought by the 48 million wine drinkers there is the real thing. Marcus Ford has worked in Shanghai's top restaurants for two decades. He says that while fake premium wines are what make the headlines in China, the real problem is the knockoff wines. I think to your average consumer, the biggest problem is what I would call looky-likey wines, where um, you know something that looks familiar on a supermarket shelf is reproduced in vast quantities and sold to the Chinese consumer as something which is not really what it's supposed to be. He says consumers are becoming more aware of this, with more than half now buying from specialist stores in China. Authenticity is right at the top of the list of, of reasons that people buy from certain, certain, certain avenues and certain venues. As a vendor, Pierre says sourcing direct from the wineries is key to his business, which specializes in small boutique wines. 90% comes directly from the vineyards, while the rest come from trusted distributors. We have a division of fine wines and uh, we buy from uh, very few persons who I know them personally. Most of their business is in Hong Kong, with 70% going to restaurants and hotels. The remainder goes to local collectors. The main difference about the collectors in Hong Kong than in anywhere in the world is that people actually drink the wine here. And I can see that every day. In Europe, you know, you go to a wine cellar and people are very proud of their collection. And, you know, they, they, they won't necessarily drink it all the time. That's a difference most winemakers would want to know about their customers. And now an IoT technology, which was primarily aimed at protecting wine from being faked, is also providing vineyards with a direct line to their consumers. The hardware we use to protect the bottle from any kind of intrusion is this, an mm -hmm. NFC chip that we install on the bottle. So we can install the chip behind the label, like that. And in that case, we will say the bottle is authentic and we can install the chip over the top of the bottle mm -hmm. to ensure the whole bottle and the wine authenticity. Used together with a smartphone app, the consumer can scan the tag to confirm authenticity, as well as access information and even video about the wine from the producer. The winery gets a direct line to the buyer, knowing if the bottle is being stored and when it's being opened and drunk. We have almost 15 wineries using our solution and we are in contact with more than 54 uh, wineries and brands in both uh, wine world and spirit uh, world. Louis says the average price of the bottles sold using their technology is 300 US dollars. As the solution has been installed at the winery, the final consumer is 100% sure to receive the genuine product at home. He's targeting China, which sells more than 50% of wine online. His app works over WeChat, allowing consumers to buy directly from producers. It was piloted in Shanghai in April of this year. For those ordering wine from restaurants, knowing if the wine is genuine or not can be difficult.
This French wine bar guarantees authenticity of its products by sourcing direct from the vineyards. 90% of our wine lists were working directly with Domain, actually, so we don't, you know, we don't buy here in Hong Kong. And the 5% we buy it from private seller in France, which is actually uh, uh, our friends, you know, and those people mostly they get allocation. Business has grown along with the popularity of wine consumption here. They opened in 2014 and now have two locations in Hong Kong with a list of over 1,000 wines. Jordan says they have monthly tastings as people want to learn more about wine. The more educated the consumers are, the more aware they'll be when encountering counterfeit wines. He says fake wines are available on the market, citing a 1978 Henri Jaillet, which he says gets offered on a regular basis. It's the most prestigious. It doesn't exist anymore. Jeremy Stockman, managing director of Hong Kong's largest wine retailer, agrees. They're old wines and there was never very much of them made. It was, sometimes it was maybe a couple of barrels, 600 bottles, and you know that was 40 years ago. Jeremy guarantees authenticity of their products, saying a third of their wines are bought ex-domain or directly from producers and then shipped by the company's shipper. Another 40 to 50 percent of their wines are from Bordeaux, where they can only be bought from a negotiant or accredited wine merchant. Bordeaux wines cannot be bought from the Chateau. They have to come through a negotiant system. So it goes from Chateau Lafitte to the negotiant to us. Jeremy says counterfeits are a bigger problem than many people realize, citing recent cases involving a fake Romani Conti wine scheme worth millions of dollars. Now, most of those 400 bottles are still in the market somewhere, probably in private cellars. And if they're caught with, say, 400 bottles, how many other thousands of bottles have been made? He says many producers are adopting technology to protect provenance of their wine. I know of one chateau that uses at least four in every bottle. And that can be things like proprietary glass, so you can't fake that bottle because they own the mold. This producer uses a chip in its label and ink in its capsule that lights under a special light. Other techniques include various letters on the label that show different colors under UV lights. Can you show me some of the wines that might be commonly copied? This is Chateau Petrus in Pomerol. It's one of the most expensive Bordeaux. This, this is a 2000 vintage. It's uh, over $50,000 a bottle. You can refill it, but to make that mold is incredibly expensive. The capsule itself is a proprietary one and there may well be some kind of device underneath. The cork should be branded as well. It should also have the vintage on there, so you can't use another, another cork. He says some empty bottles are sold for as much as 300 euros. For older vintages that don't have the benefit of technology, he says asking the seller the right questions is key. With older wine, it is in perfect condition with a perfect label and it's maybe 50 or 60 years old. I would question that. You would expect some what we call cellar damage. We'd expect the, lay, the level on the wine to be slightly lower because over that time there is always going to be a little bit of evaporation. With Hong Kong a top wine hub and China's appetite for imported wines growing, China is forecast to drive international consumption growth, potentially quenching their thirst with 94 million cases of wine in 2020, according to an IWSR report. By then, producers will hope more of the real stuff is actually getting to the lucrative market.